So those are bundle branch blocks and stemmies. This is the last thing that I kind of want to talk to you guys about um, because it's really important not to miss this. So this is a left main stemmy. Um, so this is important because this is really easily missed because we almost never really focus on ABR. Left main, by the way, what this means is it's the left main coronary artery. So if we look at kind of this picture right here, this is the left side of system. So you have the left main coronary artery here. This is the left uh, anterior descending and the left circumflex. So when we say a left main STEMI, that means that there's occlusion right here in the left main, basically cutting off blood flow to the entire LED and the entire cert. So you're basically cutting off blood flow to 60%, if not more, of the heart. So these STEMIs are very, very critical to catch um, because these patients have to be intervened on really, really quickly. The key with this STEMI is that patients have isolated ST elevations in uh, AVR and then diffuse ST uh, depressions everywhere else. You can sometimes see some ST elevations in V1, but predominantly you're just going to see ST elevations in AVR and then you're going to see diffuse ST depressions. So you see in here V2 through V6 all have ST depressions. The lateral leads one in AVL. Um, one has more so ST depressions than AVL, but then you also see ST depression in the inferior leads. So this is a, an EKG to kind of burned in your memory because you might get a patient that has chest pain and you're like, okay, they have diffuse ST, chain, uh, ST depressions, not that bad, but then you don't recognize a small ST elevation in AVR. They might be having very critical um, obstruction that really has to be intervened on. And it's important for you guys because these patients could decompensate super fast. You can imagine if you're occluding the entire left, the left system, meaning the left anterior descending and the left circumflex, meaning all this, all this myocardium, these patients could crash on you really, really fast. So kind of have this EKG burn in your mind. So that's all I got for you guys. Um, in conclusion, uh, just so you kind of some takeaways from this lecture. One, always have a systematic approach to reading EKGs because if you don't, you're gonna miss the heart blocks. You're gonna miss kind of all these little changes that could be happening when you're just only focusing on STEMIs. Two, continued chest pain after sublingual nitrogen is very, very concerning. As we saw that patient um, that we had with ST depression, got sublingual nitro, got sublingual nitro, was on a nitro drip, didn't improve, we took them to cath lab, 100% inclusion of the LED. Those things are really, really concerning. And then hypotensive patients with a STEMI, avoid nitroglycerin. For the most part, if they're hypotensive and specifically have an inferior wall or a posterior RV involvement, do not give nitro to these patients because they will crash and burn. They need fluids, they need that preload to kind of help keep them going. Um, and that's what's going to save their life, not nitroglycerin. So thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Ascension, Starflight, for letting me talk to you guys. Here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me. This QR code right here is linked to my YouTube channel. I go over more kind of nuanced EKGs there, going through like basic bundle branch blocks, going through AV blocks. If you guys have more questions about rhythm, uh, you could check that out. So 